All right, everyone, welcome to our lesson on uh, teenagers and gender differences. <clears throat> so our objectives and standards today are to explain how gender differences affect personality and to analyze different theories of gender differences. Just take a quick look at the standards, if you would, please. And our vocabulary preview, just one word, uh, gender schema is behaviors organized around how a male or female should behave and think. So think about this. How do you think certain beliefs about men and women impact teenagers? So think about, you know, the role of uh, that society, especially American society, again, has about men and women in their different roles and how that may impact children and teenagers. And our central question, how do gender differences affect teenagers? So most people do believe that, uh, that there are differences between genders, and this is according to psychologists. Uh, the main question is, are these differences real or are they imagined? And psychologists also want to know if gender differences are a result of cultural stereotypes or visible in the behaviors of boys and girls. So grades and differences. Besides the obvious dis differences, uh, studies have found that there are differences between males and females. Groups of men and women exhibit these behaviors, um, while individuals may or may not exhibit these behaviors. So again, it's important to remember that you know these are typically groups, uh, not just individuals, and sometimes that can be different. A study revealed that men are more confident, um, I should say then, not that, sorry about that, I'll try and put the end there, than women, um, especially in math or science. Um, academic task or other stereotyped ma uh, tasks that are masculine. And women, even though they may receive the same grades as men in math or science, uh, they feel less competent. Um, but females do improve their scores when they receive direct feedback on their task, especially when they are alone. Studies were also done on aggressive behaviors. And just so we know, hostile or destructive behaviors are considered aggressive. Males typically participate in more physical aggression, while females are more verbally aggressive. Um, the studies revealed that women are more fearful of physical aggression, and that's why they tend to participate in uh, more verbally aggressive behavior. So children at play. These, aggress these aggressive uh, behaviors can be observed by watching children while they play. Uh, boys are more likely to mock fight or use rough and tumble play, while girls will use um, indirect forms of aggression, such as ignoring, rejecting, talking about, or avoiding it. And there are some causes of aggression. Society encourages boys to settle conflicts through aggression and to be competitive at a very young age. And there have also been studies of identical twins that show men have a lower level of uh, a neurotransmitter known as serotonin um, than women. And higher levels of aggression uh, typically occur when there are lower levels of serotonin. So again, there's a chemical um, atmosphere to causes of aggression as well. So differences in communication. There are also differences in male and female communication styles. Women are typically viewed as more talkative, but it uh, has been proven that men frequently talk more and will interrupt women more frequently. Now, females do tend to talk more when they have the power in a relationship, and they also seem to use uh, certain things in their speech. Uh, one of these is uh, hedges. They might say, you know, or uh, things like that. They also use disclaimers like, I may be wrong. And they also ask a lot of questions at the end of sentences, okay? Like, okay, you know, we're going to go to the mall and then get dinner, okay? Um, they'll, they'll ask questions at the end of a statement. Now, in terms of uh, nonverbal cues, uh, men will display more dominant uh, nonverbal cues, while women will display um, more submission and warmth uh, for, verbal, for nonverbal cues. Um, and women are more typically more receptive to nonverbal cues, so they understand... You know, if someone has their arms folded or someone looks sad or angry, they can typically pick up on that quicker than men. Cognitive differences. 165 studies on verbal ability were examined by Janet Hyde and Marcia Lin, um, and they found that there were no measurable differences in verbal skills 
that existed between men and women. The differences do that do exist uh, are typically relatively small. Uh, and the same could be said for mathematics skills between men and women. Males and females do perform about the same on problem solving until high school, then males typically uh, surpass or pass females. Um, spatial ability is also better for men, but women are better at tracking objects. Um, and again, keep in mind that studies do not reflect you know, individual differences, ambitions, or past histories. So there are some views or theories of cognitive differences. The biological theory states that gender role development focuses on hormones, brain organization, anatomy. So again, focusing on biology. Boys will prefer trucks, while girls will prefer dolls, no matter what the parents do to change that or switch that. Um, differences in behavior can be traced back to the earliest humans. Um, and this is uh, also traced back to when women and men had certain adaptive, certain behaviors over time to survive. The psychoanalytical theory, uh, gender identity results when a child identifies with a parent of the same sex. And again, this is according to Sigmund Freud. So boys will identify with their fathers and girls will identify with their mothers. And this typically occurs between the ages of three to five years of age. Now, there are some arguments by critics that identification seems to be the result instead of the cause of gender typing. So um, some critics do criticize this as well. The social learning theory uh, emphasizes the role of cognitive and social processes on how individuals perceive, organize, and use information. So what does that mean? <laughs> uh, children learn their gender roles by observing and imitating models, such as teachers, parents, friends, and peers. So they, they become boys or girls by watching others. They watch what their father does. They watch what their older brother does. They watch what a friend of theirs does. Um, and they also respond to rewards and punishments for behaviors by parents or others. For example, if a boy, um, you know, I don't know, let's say a boy is playing football and he makes a, a, a strong hit or a hard tackle in football and his parents applaud and, you know, are cheering for him on the sideline or, you know, maybe take him out for ice cream after a well, while, then that boy is obviously going to respond to being a strong male. Um, same with a girl. If a girl, you know, is seen uh, playing with a baby doll or, you know, helping her mother take care of, you know, a younger sibling or a baby or something like that. Maybe the mom or dad will, you know, give the daughter something. So, you know, they, they respond to rewards or punishments for behaviors that they may be doing. <coughs> Excuse me. And the last one is the cognitive development theory. This proposes that children acquire gender roles by interacting with their environment and thinking about those experiences. Um, they learn different sets of standards or behavior, um, and a, to make this happen, a child must recognize themselves as male or female and organize behavior around it. A good way to think about this, again, football season, so we'll go back to a football reference. Uh, boys may form a gender schema after watching a football game and um, watching the players, you know, play rough or tough. Um, then the boy may go out and play rough or tough in, you know, school or uh, in, in, in a sports game. So again, watching something in their environment, like watching a football game, thinking, hmm, you know, those guys are tough, I have to be tough, and then applying those um, experiences and what they've observed to their own life. So again, boy watches football, boy says, oh, those guys are tough, I have to be tough, then he goes out and acts tough and, and rough and stuff like that. So gender schemas can help reinforce some of these certain behaviors. Now, gender roles have also changed over time. Uh, roles of men and women in society have changed. Uh, for example, most women did not seek careers before the 1960s, uh, but this had changed by the mid-1980s when most women had jobs outside the home. Now, despite some changes, studies have shown that women do not advance as quickly as men in leadership positions, um, and inequality in the workplace could have many sources according to uh, industrial and organizational psychologists. Some of these could be uh, discrimination against women by companies. Um, women frequently may interrupt their careers uh, to take care of children and things like that. Um, and there may be different ambitions between men and women in terms of career goals and things like that. So we'll wrap up. So there are gender differences 
uh, between males and females, including certain behaviors. Um, children learn from a young age gender differences, and they apply those behaviors and what they see uh, to their own personalities. And gender differences have changed over time. That's why I put, you know, the male with the suitcase and the female with the baby and it looks like a, a broom or a mop in a bucket because uh, those used to be the typical gender roles, but those have changed over time. All right, guys, hope you have a great rest of your day. Uh, please try your best on the questions, and I'll see and talk to you later.